Which one have I got? Holy cow. That is, whoa, 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 stay down, stay down, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What's going on everybody and welcome to Uncut, my series here on this channel where I take you guys on the water with me completely uncut for a day of bass fishing and hopefully we all learn something along the way. In the beautiful body of water we are fishing today is Harrison Ranch in Grand Saline, Texas, part of the Private Water Fishing Network. I'm excited, this one just opened. I know the property owner has been doing some awesome work to this to make it a bass fishing paradise so hopefully we're gonna have lots of fish catches for you guys. Let's kind of go over conditions. It is early summer but it's already hot. I mean I'm gonna have my hood and my buff up most of this video to protect myself from the sun but it is probably 90 degrees already and it's like 10 or 10 o'clock in the morning the water temperature yeah already getting hot which should mean these fish are definitely in early summer mode you know fully past the post spawn or they are in full-blown summer so we're going to use some summer techniques we have some drop shots we have some texas free worms maybe a little bit of top water but i'm excited so uh Let's get fishing. The first thing I like to do when I'm dissecting a new body of water is really just spend some time kind of looking around. So I have a rod in my hand right here. I'm gonna cast around a, a Strike King Cutter Worm as I fish. But really, you know, I'm gonna stand up to show you guys this. Really, I'm just looking at these little grass mats here. I'm looking to see how shallow it is up there. I may go check out um, at the lower section of the lake there to maybe see the, the max depth on my fish finder. I just kind of want to understand a little bit about this body of water before I really spend time fishing, you know, a whole lot of it. So that's my first step always, is to spend some time to look around. You know, if I'm going to a body of water that's really far away and it's got good Google Earth imagery, I'll probably have spent some time looking at it on Google Earth beforehand. But I did not on this one. I just showed up and we're gonna hope we can, uh, we can dissect it. lost him first stinking cast i wasn't expecting that literally first cast with the frog so you know what maybe they're not as deep as i thought figured the fish would be out deep chasing bait fish or just kind of hanging out now these fish might still be chasing bluegill because that was my first cast up into the juice of the shallow weird grass whatever the heck it is and uh got a fish so let the uncut begin I literally just did an uncut frog fishing uh, for, you know, giant bass recently. Heck, maybe I'm doing another one. Maybe uh, all they want is the frog right now. I mean, that, that, honestly, that's, that's kind of a, a constant when it comes to this time of the year across the country. If you've got vegetation, man, one of the best ways to catch them is a topwater frog. Yep, what I tell you, what I tell you, there we go. Bring it in. What a beautiful, beautiful stinking fish. It's so green. Oh, hello, hello. Ha ha ha. All right. Beautiful. First fish landed on the ribbit, on the pop and pad perch. My favorite frog of all time. Thank you, friend. All right. So we're probably just going to be going around the edge, throwing a frog. Now, I do want to mix it up. I want to catch them on a worm. I, I got uh, the new Lou's BFS reel, the, shallow, the custom light shallow spool. I'd love to catch some on that. But you know what, if they're gonna eat the frog, I'm not opposed, not gonna tell them no, ever. Now what is happening is I'm getting hot. So, the buff, the, at least the hoodie, is coming on first and I gotta make sure we ain't got no water on the lens, we're good. How about water in there, we're good. All right, I'm gonna stand back up again. Y'all gonna see chest mount here. Oh gosh, that's what happens when you winch down on your braid is that it has formed a groove. It usually takes a cast or two to get rid of that groove. And then also this, this happens too. Oh my gosh. It's a lot harder in a kayak to fix this stuff than it is on the bank. There we go. Okay. They are ferociously eating the frog today. And that is good news. Good news for the poor and the widow. Now one problem is that if I want to be in and around all this grass all day, I might as well just leave my pedal drive system, you know, back at the, at the truck because it's going to be mostly paddle, unless I can kind of weave my way in and around. There looks like there's to be enough, uh, 
enough gaps in it. All right, heck yeah, one fish hooked, one fish landed. Well, I guess, I guess it would be, that would be two fish hooked, one fish landed. I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll have a, a drone shot going right now showing you guys exactly what I'm targeting with the frog here. I'm throwing it around these these holes in the grass. And I feel like a broken record that I've been I've been making so much content like this lately, but man, it's just it's 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 Bible, it's Bible truth, man. It's probably sacrilegious. It's uh what's the word I'm looking for? Good bull gospel truth was the word I was looking for, but that's probably even more sacrilegious. No, that's a small fish. I don't want you. Let go of the frog, please. Oh, he didn't let go of the frog, so we're gonna we're gonna catch him. We're gonna catch the small the small boy. <sighs> Maybe he's not as small as I thought. Oh, he's not as not as small as I thought. He's a nice little fish. <sighs> yeah, we are dragging. Oh, he got off. That's because I didn't set the hook at all. Fish got off. And like I like I said in that intro deal there, I've got so much of this weird grass in this body of water. I wish property owners would spawn, not spawn, would uh, would put regular grass in their bodies of water. And holy cow, no wonder the bass are around here. The bluegill made beds around these holes, and holy cow, is there a lot of big bluegill. Dang, I want to show you guys this. I really want to show you what this looks like, because this right here is like surefire bluegill spawn, why these fish are here. Oh my gosh, these bluegill are big. I want to catch some of these. These are big old bluegill. Holy cow. Oh, and yeah, you got bass all around them. Okay, okay. This is what's going on, baby. We got bluegill spawn going on. Okay. I'm going to be casting my frog in and around these beds. I mean, and there's just, there's, there's bluegill, and there's a hole over here. Here, let me flip my Texas rig in this hole behind me oh heck i could probably flip in this hole in front of me there's just there's bluegill everywhere but i like this hole behind me it looked a little juicier flip it in there there's bass literally hanging around these bluegill beds that bait's falling and i got one and i got one yes sir gosh nice fish nice fish bring it in here buddy all right <laughs> this is awesome this is the type of fishing that you want to see right here holy cow welcome to uncut cool so like i said i figured these fish would be more advanced in summertime but you know what bluegill are spawning and the bass can't help but hang around so i'll kind of take a second here to explain what the bluegill spawn is, when it happens, and why around bluegill beds, or as they call them in, in the south, brim beds, are good places to fish. Well, you know, just like every other fish, bluegill got to spawn too. And they spawn in a very similar way to bass, but more in a colony normally. So bass will spawn by themselves. Sometimes, you know, down a bank, you'll see three or four beds in a row because it's good, it's good, you know, bottom composition for bedding activity. But bluegill, they will spawn in like a large collection. It could be five bluegill beds could be like 50 or 100 bluegill beds and when that happens the bass know about it the bass are done spawning the bluegill spawn happens at the end or, or when it's finished uh, the bass spawn's finished so the bass come from their shallows where they were they kind of move down the bank to where the bluegill are spawning and they say oh my goodness food that is sitting on their bed and so the bass just kind of like honestly they're like menaces <laughs> they're kind of mean they just cruise around the bluegill beds and then every few hours they eat one and uh-oh there goes our buddy, uh, Jimmy, says the other bluegill. But you know what? They're spawning. They can't, they can't leave. So they kind of, you know, chase the bass off. And that's how the bass get real healthy before the summertime is the bluegill spawn. So I'm excited. I'm all kinds of jacked up right now because the, uh, the bluegill spawn's going on. So I'm going to put the frog down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch between the frog and the cutter worm because cutterworms are a great thing to flip. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stand up and I'm gonna flip in and around all of these holes, especially ones that I see bluegill beds. There goes my worm right there. I do have to 
clear my spool a little bit. Kind of jacked up my line on one of those hook sets. This line is also old. I need a new line. Okay. This is what I like to see right here, baby. This is what I like. All right, let's restart these clips. I will periodically do that throughout the day just to make sure I don't have any errors or glitches in my footage. Come on now. Basically, I just gotta find, I gotta find the best, the best holes. And the problem is I've got a pedal drive kayak and I'm fishing around a lot of really like weedy weeds. I'm not talking about stuff that can be easily, you know, taken off your prop. You gotta actually open up the, the opening here and clean it off. But I'm able to still move a little bit through it. Okay. Let's find ourselves that hole again. There it is. I think that was it at least. Watch my line as it's going down. See if it jumps. It did not jump. Oh wait, shoot. The hole's right here. I'm a dummy. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh gosh, dang it. Oh, I had one. I had one. Literally pulled my pants down. That was close. Almost went in the water there. It did not though. I care about the planet. Okay. So this hole right here has got one. Let's go ahead and flip in there. Let it sink as I peel out some loose line. And I should be able to set the hook right when I, oh, no, he wasn't on there. Here, oh gosh, dang it. It's totally possible also that I'm gonna set the hook on a lot of bluegill today because like I said, they're, they're pretty big, pretty meaty bluegill. <laughs> How are we doing? Doing good. Okay, I have to get around this grass. Man, I I should probably just, honestly, I should just uh, put my paddles back together here and just paddle around. It's gonna be the best course of action, you think? All right. I wish I could just get rid of my live scope deal as well. I don't even need this. My goodness. I think I may go, honestly, once I check out the, the middle here and see what's going on uh, with that, I may go back to the, the truck and leave some of this stuff that I don't need because it's just going to get in the way. Fish finder gets in the way. Live scope transducer gets in the way. And I don't want that. No, I don't. Eventually, they're going to kind of get wise to you. When you're fishing around their beds, the bluegill, the bluegill won't get wise. They'll still be super aggressive, but the bass will get a little wise. They're like, huh, I thought the first thing I ate was a bluegill. That wasn't. And then our buddy disappeared as well. And that wasn't a bluegill. So maybe I should stop eating for a second. I think a jig is probably a better choice for this. So if that's the case, I'm gonna. Gosh, oh man, gosh. That was not a small fish. That was a larger one. We got kind of some nice, partly cloudy skies going on here. Feel It feels nice to not have the sun just beating down on you. But I have a feeling we're gonna catch a lot of fish today. Flip this down there. Honestly, the, the cloud cover probably helps. Gosh, stole my whole worm. Oh, stole my whole worm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go jig. If I'm being honest, worm is great, but uh, I think jig's probably a better choice. So, here we go. No outcast tackle, PB&J finesse jig. Falls nice and slow. Ooh, got the, the scoun bug, little claws going back and forth. Oh yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna smoke some fish, let me tell you something. Ugh. Let me tell you something, boys and girls. After I kind of fish through this area I and go deep, I will be getting rid of this, uh, this extra electronics and such. Cause yeah, they're just, look at that, they're in the way. 
100% of the way. Although maybe, I mean, we'll, we'll flip the jig around a little bit. Maybe the worm is, is what they want. Gosh, those bluegill are huge. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, the jig might get too much of this snot grass. We'll see. We'll see about it. I've got a feeling it'll work. Oh, beautiful. Just got the sun poking out. Now I can see what's going on down there. Mmm. All right. Let's pedal our way, paddle our way a little bit shallower. We've kind of educated these fish here as to who's, who's their daddy. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's Bluegill City right there. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, you know what? Now that I flip a jig around, I'm not sure if a jig's the right, the right choice. Gosh, there's some, some dang gills up there, though. Yeah, actually, I don't think a jig's the right choice. I'm gonna keep it honest, keep it out, but I think we're gonna go back to the worm. Seems to get just way more bites. Gotta grab myself the bag of worms. Hopefully they're in here. Put this one down underneath. Where are the cutter worms? Knowing me, I probably don't have any. I probably got rid of them and they're in the truck somewhere. All right, five inch Ocho will have to work. And guess what? It'll probably work. It'll probably work just fine. Don't think we're gonna see any issues catching fish on the five inch Ocho. Especially Texas rigged. All right. I'm already getting annoyed with my live scope, so. Let's catch one more fish up shallow, then go deep, check it out. See if I'm, if I'm missing anything out there, which I, I doubt it, but you never know. And you know what? I'm just gonna stinking move this into the boat. I can't. There we go. Kind of. Kind of moved. I can literally feel the, the drag of my pedal system. Alright. As y'all can tell, I'm kind of scatterbrained right now. I think a frog is probably better for covering water, casting to holes, and then maybe once I find a good area, uh, we can throw the worm. Oh gosh, there's just, there's so much grass on my stuff. All right, get off of there. Matter of fact, we're gonna put the live scope deal down for now. On the floor, thank you. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and go out deep. I'm already not feeling. Not feeling messing with all this grass with a prop under my kayak. And here she blows. No wonder you're not going nowhere. I'm looking around, man. It really seems like even out deep, there's still grass on the bottom. There's just a few pieces of wood here, but really nothing special. I'm gonna get out my get out my minnow, shake this bad boy around. Let's see what this looks like. It's a new new minnow I'm trying. That'll be good. That'll do, donkey. Just looking for looking for what they call floaters. Just bass that are kind of floating in the water column. I just don't think there's gonna be many of them. And I know that y'all probably don't want to watch 
live scope and footage anyways, which is why I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of it. But when you go to a new body of water, you gotta bring every tool you got. You know, you have to bring all the fish finders and everything, but I pretty soon found out today I don't I don't think this is gonna be the ticket. This ain't gonna be the Sunday NFL NFL red zone ticket. Like there's there's some fish, but might be crappie. Oh gosh. You gotta open your bail, Tyler. Gotta open your bail. I just, I don't think these are bass. Gosh, whatever it is, just smoked me. Oh ho, they are not bass. They are in, fra in fact, big slab crappie. Okay, well, I'm gonna tighten my drag a little bit. All right, so they're crappie. And you know what, today is not really, I'm not really in a multi-species mood today. You gotta be in a multi-species mood. It's not me today. There's one. What have I got? What have I got? Holy cow. Holy cow. That is... Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stay away from the trees. Stay away from the trees. Tighten my drag a little bit. That is not a crappie. That is not a crappie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Holy cow. Y'all ready to see this? As I got sweat in my eyes, but I'm going to fight this fish. Oh, literally just like retrieving my bait in. Oh no, stay away from the trees. Holy cow. This is probably the biggest bass they got in here. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Stay down, stay down. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh I feel that scratch. Here we go, here we go. Oh gosh. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh no, he's underneath there. He's underneath there. Oh gosh, I got him. I got this fish, but he's around my uh, uh, my transducer. Oh my gosh. How am I gonna, I've gotta, gotta open the spool. It's a six pounder, oh my goodness. I was not expecting to get, especially after I'd just gotten a crappie. Wow. <laughs> and he was so barely hooked. It's crazy. I mean like one good jump and this fish would have been gone. Right there, I'd say six pounder easy. Probably would have been an eight if we're talking winter pre-spawn. Oh my gosh. All right, this place, this place has got him. And maybe I'll spend a few minutes, a few minutes more doing this. Oh my gosh. Let's get a good thumbnail picture here. All righty, thank you my friend for all you're doing for the, for the channel. Mr. Six Younder, and we'll see ya. That was fun. Literally, like, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even see that fish on my graph. Was just, like, retrieving my bait in. He must have shot up from the bottom. Wasn't even looking. That's awesome. That is stinking cool. Let's check my line, because he definitely took me around some grass. But 12 pounds, Seaguar gold, gold label. Should be fine to handle some stuff like that. Wow. Uh, it, it still is. It's a little frayed. It's not bad though. And I don't have much line to do. I gotta have to tie a new leader. I think I'll be okay. I'll be okay to not retie. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. All right, we have arrived back at the shore to drop off all the stuff we don't need. First is the pedal drive system. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Next is turning off our fish finder here and disconnecting that. And we're gonna bring this along with this rod up on the bank because I'm not gonna be doing no minnow shaking anymore. And we are officially off to not live scope, but instead find some bluegill beds and catch some fish. There's one. There's one, yes sir, yes sir. All right, got one, flipping the worm. Oh, 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 my worm, no, got it back, there we go. Bring it in here, yes sir, all right. Not a big one, but a nice one. Flipping the worm into a deep hole, so I think that's kind of gonna be our, our pattern. We throw frogs around the shallow stuff, and we throw the worm in the deep stuff. How classic is that? That's a tail. As old as time, my friends. Oh, and so is the wind. Usually when you uh, finally get on something, get on a little area, 
and you're excited to fish it, usually the wind blows you right into it. And that's just how the cookies crumble. It's how it crumbles right there, baby. Nothing much you can do about it, except enjoy the ride. I just saw another fish. I don't know where it went. So I'm just gonna flip my worm over here and hope that the fish is there. Let's check the water spots. We're good. All right, perfect. So yeah, the next hour-ish, two hours of this uncut, I'm just gonna be going along the bank, fishing like, like we all do, man. Meat and potatoes, frog and worm, frog and worm, worm and frog. Matter of fact, I see a really good area up here for the frog. I say really good. I, it could be just an opening with no bluegill beds, but we're gonna hope it's got them beds. And the fish wanna eat that frog. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the next fish. We'll do the comment challenge at the end of the next fish. Just to kind of gauge the uh, gauge the awareness. Hey, if you're watching right now and you are not subscribed, I'm going to flash a little graphic on the screen right now showing how many people watch my content that are not subscribed. And we got to get that number higher. That number's got to be much, much higher. So if you're enjoying, you like the... You like the fish catching, you like the explaining, the teaching, man, that's what we're all about here. So go ahead and join that, join that subscribe team, Team TRF as I like to call it. It's got a nice ring to it. Okay, I'm gonna cast this frog. Where am I gonna cast it? I'm gonna cast it way up there, eh? That's a heck of a cast. It's nice and subtle. It is a popping frog, but you don't have to really pop it. You can just walk it side to side. Come on now. Nothing. Nada. Nothing, not a zilch. <laughs> and as we get into this corner here, it just, it gets too choked out. So not really worth my time to cast over there. Probably won't be any bass and for sure wouldn't be any big ones. So, back my way out, grab a drink of water as I do so. All right, keep this train rolling. Like I talked about earlier, bluegill beds oftentimes have the ability to condense bass, you know, be four, five, six in one area, sometimes even more. So. The fact that I just caught one flipping this edge over here makes me want to do it again, wherever it went. I don't know where this edge was. That a hole? That might be a hole, I don't know. Okay. Let me know down in the comments what kind of uncuts y'all want to see in the future. You want to see more kayak? You want to see some smallmouth? You want to see some, some offshore uncuts to kind of show the, the disparity between being on them and being off them? Let me know down below what you want to see. I'll do my best to oblige. I know y'all love the pond uncuts. Those always do well. <laughs> All right. That was a hole, I believe. I apologize if there's any wind noise. Can't really do much about it today. Could have worn a mic, but I'm not a fan of how the mic sounds. I'm about to get a little camera technical on y'all. Not a fan of how the mic sounds when you are not talking. It's just, it's just kind of a dead noise. I would rather have some ambient noise, which is why I use the GoPro for my audio source because it really picks up a lot of extra background noise that a uh, standard on-body mic would not get. There's definitely ways that YouTube fishermen go about doing things and filming that a regular filmmaker would be appalled by. They're like, oh, you always film in 60 frames? How, how could you do that? Well, because I wanna, 
I want the chance to slow something down if I if I need to. You don't edit in 24 frames. Oh my gosh. Probably just nerded nerded myself out there. All right. We got some cloud cover, so frog comes back in hand. Ah. There we go. Ooh, we have an edge. We have an edge here. Let's get the worm. Right here. We're sitting on a grass mat. It's kind of keeping us steady. Come on, fish. Eat. We really got to find some, some good openings like we did when we figured out they were on bluegill beds. That little, that little area over there, I really haven't spent much time. After I caught this fish and I went deep, kind of abandoned that area. But I'm about to go back and get some more, get some more fun. Yeah, because I'm not sure how many of these holes I'm flipping into are actually bluegill beds. So I'm going to stand up here. Start kind of cruising around. Stand up paddleboard style. Stand up paddleboard style. Yeah, I mean like this this whole bank over here really doesn't have much to offer. It's just flat bottom, a little bit of grass, but no holes, no edges, no bluegill beds. There's a whole lot of dead water. That's one of the biggest things I think people mess up on early on in fishing is that they just kind of fish everything instead of finding what areas, what you know, types of cover are holding fish that day and then and then replicating it. They kind of catch one fish doing something and then oh that looks good over there, let's go fish that. But in reality, they could be a lot more efficient. And that's really what I want to preach here on this channel. I see people all the time just going down the bank. Just worm in hand. Bebopping around. Not catching squat because the fish in water that ain't got no bass in it. Gosh. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, he got off. Dang it, man. Gosh. I saw, I, I saw him come up and eat it. That was a four or five pounder. Man, just didn't get a good hook set in him and lost him. <sighs> right on the edge. Right on an edge. Man, that's a bummer. I hate losing fish, especially big ones. But especially with the frog, you're not going to win them all. You're not going to catch every fish. Okay. I think I had him hooked, so I doubt he'll bite again. But I, went, I am going to flip the worm into that area because it's possible that's a bluegill bed and there's more bass there so let's give it a shot right there oh that was a big fish dang it hate that i hate that i hate that i hate that Honestly, that cast that I just made with the, with the frog, just didn't think I'd get, get anything on it. I thought it was a little too deep. Didn't think there'd be a fish hanging on that edge, but turns out there was. So once again, myth busted. Thought they'd be on all the shallow holes, but they might be on some of the, the deep ones as well. Oh, I just, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys something. This is my least favorite type of grass. Whatever this is, it's so annoying. It, it doesn't stay in little clumps nice and stringy. Ugh. I hate stringy grass. Oh, and there it is. There's some more of it. How nice. Okay. Let's find us some fish. And it even collects on the dang frog. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I just saw Saw a wake. Oh, there's a wake behind him. I think it's a turtle though. I don't think it's a bass. 
Yeah, there's definitely a wake behind it. I bet it's a turtle. <laughs> yeah, it was a turtle. We got a turtle monster. We got a turtle man behind me. Maybe cast out there. Maybe casting this direction will work my boat that direction. If I get a fish, I can pull the boat. And again, it may look to you guys watching this like I'm just kind of aimlessly casting around, but I'm not. I'm using my polarized sunglasses to look for the holes in the grass, the places where it's not, you know, topped out like this. That's where I'm targeting the frog. I'm gonna cast way up there. There's some bluegill beds out there, I see them. These bass are just confusing. Like I know there's gotta be tons of fish in here. Just can't figure out exactly where they wanna sit. Probably all ganged up. It's usually what happens. And I'm just not around the gang. Ugh, we gotta get the gang back together. All right, and how nice. The area that I just thought I cast over some bluegill beds is not in fact bluegill beds. It's just shallow nothing <laughs> that looked white. So that was a waste of uh, three minutes of my time there. All right, and I gotta focus on the edges and the holes, not, not go shallow. I'm probably wondering also why I'm not throwing any moving baits. And that's just because the, the cover doesn't allow it. You know, even, even out deep, I might be able to throw a swim bait or an underspin, uh, maybe a spinner bait, but it would just have to be, I have to be so careful because so many of these areas here are just covered in this stringy grass. So it's a, it's a total worm jig, soft plastic type of place. Always gotta be peeling out line, especially if you're drifting backwards. And then as you peel, you kind of like move your rod tip up and it forces the line through the guides. Gosh, told you, told you. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Get in the, get out of the grass. Get out of the grass. Oh, oh gosh, this grass does not rip very easily. Oh no. <laughs> Dang it. There we go. You got to get the fish stuck. And once you get them stuck, they can't come off. All right. Beautiful. Two and a half pounds of fish and seven and a half pounds of grass. <clears throat> Got the grass off. Thank you, my friend. All right. Ocho down the gullet. Uh-oh, he's deep hooked. We're going to have to do a little bit of surgery here on this fish more than likely. So when you deep hook a fish, I'm going to always grab the worm and just trash the worm. Fish's life is more important than a worm. As y'all can see, the hook is way, way down there. So you find the direction the hook is pointed. You go in, these pliers need WD-40. You go in with the pliers, you grab the bend of the hook, if you can, yep. You twist it, usually forcing the eye down, out the, back out the gill plate. <laughs> these pliers are so stiff. There we go. Poked it out, and there we go. Fish is survived. Fish has survived, fish has saved. Cool, 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 cool. Just as I had thought, they're on the deeper edges, deeper holes. So, I'm gonna stop dilly-dallying around with this shallow stuff, because that is not worth my time. Deep it is. And I'm gonna grab myself a new, new Ocho. These fish just absolutely, it's delectable to them. Green pumpkin candy, mm-mm-mm, yum. Who doesn't like green pumpkin candy? I just rigged it Texas rig style, baby. Little eighth ounce tungsten weight, bobber stopped. If I'm flipping around grass, I almost always have a bobber stopped. If it's around wood, like, like deeper wood, or just kind of open water Texas rigging, I don't bobber stop very much, but if I'm fishing grass, I do. Who texted me? Jordan Lee. Jordan Lee texted me. I also got to text my wife. Had some business to attend to there. And now we're gonna get ourselves off the clay and catch a few more bass. I had some business to attend to there, so we're gonna put the phone away, get back to fishing with you guys. Gonna go back to that open hole that I just caught that last fish at and uh, see what we can do about it. 
Let's see if there's any more fish in there. Where'd I cast? I think I'd cast him there. All right. Uh-oh. Paddle on the loose. No fish there. I'm gonna get myself a little, a little deeper. Just kind of want to always stop paddling before I get to an area. Allow myself to slowly and quietly drift in. There we go. Got one. Got one. Hey, on the edge. One thing I am not good at is leaving enough line for my getting the fish in a kayak. I'm not good at that. Come on now. Come on now. Hey, 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 hey. How about you not do that? Perfect. There we go. Hook in the bottom lip. Not exactly where you want it, but it wasn't coming off. Beautiful pound and a half. Oh, we're on them, folks. We have them dialed. We know what to do. It's always a good feeling when you, you finally figure out the pattern. Oh, we didn't do the comment challenge. Gosh darn. All right, comment challenge. So first I gotta check my, oh, we got some, we got some water on the lens. So comment challenge, if you're still here, comment down below your favorite color of worm. I wanna know what y'all's favorite colors of worm is. Is it watermelon? Is it a green pumpkin? Is it black and blue? Are you a standard motor oil kind of guy? What's your favorite soft plastic worm color? Everybody's got a favorite. And if you're feeling extra spunky and you want to comment as well with that comment why you think that color works so well, that'd be cool. That would be a good way to, you know, share an opinion and, and maybe educate some people in the comment section. Maybe, maybe give somebody a, an idea. You know, maybe they, they always throw black and blue and they fish in clear water and maybe they see that you fish natural in clear water or maybe vice versa. Maybe somebody throws straight black worms in clear water and, and has a whole lot of success. That may trigger, trigger a thought in somebody to, you know what, maybe I should try that. And who knows, somebody might catch more fish because of a, a comment they read. So drop a comment down below. Okay, we're gonna make another cast this way. All right, nothing in that hole. Make a cast over there. Man, who is blowing up my phone? Who's blowing up? Oh gosh, I got a fish. Yeah, I got a fish. Holy cow. Is my phone good? Okay, gosh. Making sure I didn't drop my phone. Hey, you little squirt. That right there, if you're new to the channel, that's an ice cream cone bass. Half a scoop right there. That's a kitty scoop. Kitty scoop, but a future big one. If he keeps eating as aggressively as he just ate, almost took the rod out of my hand, he'll be a future 10 pounder. I would say a future share lunker, but we're in private water, so. Can't, can't uh, submit those. That's one thing I've always wondered is why we can't submit share lunkers from private water in Texas because I think they put 20% or 80% or something of your spawn from your fish um, back in the body of water it came from. And man, they could have like, they could have some more giants if they accepted uh, 13 pluses from, from private water. I think that'd be, I don't know, good for the state. Maybe because private fish have higher chance of, you know, infections or whatever. Maybe that's why they don't do that. Who knows? They're the biologists. I'm not. I gotta trust them and their opinions. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bunch of biggins around here now. Oh, lost my worm. How mean. How mean. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Cash. You're gonna stop. Thank you. See, that's where you wanna hook them right there. Roof of the mouth was not coming off but i lost my worm in the process now I, I am trying to get better at sitting down while kayaking kayak fishing but especially this time of the year when you really have to look around uh, to see the open areas the bluegill beds 
when you and you're higher up same reason why guys that bed fish oftentimes or, or saltwater fish will build a platform to stand on the higher you are the easier it is to see in the water so when i'm when i'm kayak fishing and i've got a sea i'm going to be standing up nine times out of ten okay no more shallow my kayak's drifting so we got to go into the deep into the deep. What a beautiful day though. A little bit of breeze. Oh gosh, there's one. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Holy cow. I don't know how much of that y'all saw. What a stinking jumper that was. Jeez. That fish was an Olympic athlete. My gosh. Chunkier fish too. A little bit more of a belly on it. Man. Oh, fish, uh, fish did the high jump. That's awesome. See you, buddy. Cool, cool, cool. They are loaded exactly where I thought they'd be. They're loaded on the edges, in the holes, eating a worm. Who could have guessed? And you may be thinking, well, Tyler, you're on private water. Of course you're catching fish. Well, yes, private water fishing does allow you to have access to places with more bass, but the tips that I'm teaching apply for pressure places just as much as they do private places. So if you're struggling to catch fish and you're just fishing around the grass and over the grass and fishing the shallow stuff, and if it's summertime or they're around bluegill beds, man, you gotta find the holes, you gotta find the drop-offs, the edges. That's where they're gonna be regardless of the type of body of water. Private, public, big, small, anything. If it's got grass and bass, they're gonna be on the edges. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know where I just cast. I don't even know if this is a, an edge. I can't, the, the cloud cover came, so I can't quite, can't quite tell now. I can tell though, there's a stick in the water over there. There's gotta be one hanging on that stick. I'm gonna sit down here, maybe set the hooks. Oh, here, here comes one. Oh, dang it. I set the hook with way too much line out. Shoot. Oh wait, never mind. He came back for it. He came back for it. This is a nice one. He's like he's fighting real. We oh no. Just a just a jumper. Just a jump man. Lots of fish around that stick though. Hey, look at this. Proud of myself. I got the right amount of line out. Ugh. There we go. Had to grab him MLF style here by the pressure points because he had the had the hook in his bottom lip couldn't lip him but man oh man am i going through some worms today that's for sure these guys are just tearing them up you'll also notice you go through more soft plastics in the summer especially if you leave your your bag your soft plastic bag in the heat like in the direct sunlight don't do that that will weaken your soft plastics makes them hot and also i'd love to see studies i'd love to see if a study could be done on the temperature of soft plastic lures and if like, if a bass, you know, know knows what a, a bait fish or a bluegill feels like in their mouth, it's the same, it's the same temperature as the water probably because they're cold blooded. I'd love to know if you have a hot soft plastic, if they can sense that and like immediately spit it out. That'd be an interesting, uh, interesting study. I'd, I'd pay to read. All right. See if we got some more next to the stick. Let's restart our clip here. All right. Give our worm a little hop. Kind of feels nice, if I'm being honest, to have all the electronics away. Now there's certain times of the year where you need it. That that late fall, winter, pre-spawn, I mean, if you don't got live scope in your kayak and you're fishing like open water stuff, you're kind of, you know, you're lessening your chance of knowing where they are. But man, if I'm just throwing a worm around, just looking at sticks and openings, we don't need that kind of stuff. All right, they are not on that stick. It's good to know. I'm just gonna kinda cast way out there in the middle. Let it sink as I paddle to the only little section in the middle that's got consistent cover. Got three sticks right here in the middle. I think it's part of a big tree, big tree system. There we go. 
and I'm gonna stay far off these trees. Cast my worm in there. But I'm I'm willing to bet I'll catch a fish out of here. I'd put some money. If the placing of a bet was legal in Texas, I would uh, I'd place a bet on this location having a bass. Mostly because I caught one out of it earlier. Just hopping it over the sticks. Watching my line. Always be watching your line if you can. If it's too windy, you can't see it, you know, so be it. But if you can watch your line as it falls, you're going to notice some bites throughout the year that you might have not noticed before. Now, but if you know, if you weren't watching and then you go to lift up, that fish might be gone. So always watch your line for jumps. They're like, There's a jump right there. Oh, wow. Well, must have been a bluegill. Sometimes, though, you can move the rod and jump it yourself. Kind of fake yourself out. Man, if I don't catch one here, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be shocked. Not gonna lie. Like this right here looks like a bass. Looks like a bass on my line. It's not though. My worm is just falling extra fast past this stick, I guess. Whew, and I'm getting H O T. That's for sure. Hope my nose doesn't get too burnt today. I could be I could put the buff up, but then y'all can't hear me as well. So want to have conversations with the viewers. Y'all can see my facial expressions. That's one thing you'll notice in all my talking sections of videos, all my instructionals. I'm hardly ever wearing a hat. Sometimes I am if I have long hair like I do now, but hardly ever wearing a hat and I'm never wearing sunglasses to the best of my ability because uh, I just want to make sure that when I'm talking to y'all you can you can see my expressions and what I'm saying. Same with thumbnails. Hardly ever have um, a hat and sunglasses together on. Sometimes I'll have a hat on and a thumbnail, but I try to have... Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I do have plenty of hats on and thumbnails. It's the sunglasses. I never have sunglasses on and a thumbnail. All right. No fish. No bones. Surprisingly. I would have sworn to you that I would catch them in that area but I didn't so you win some you lose some it ain't always home run and that's just the way life plays we were a team love was a game we'd have been the 98 Braves 98 Braves alright we've reached the singing humming whistling portion of the uncut Haha! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, not kidding. We did reach that portion, but I'm gonna get to some fish catches here in a second. Mmm. Good quality H2O. I'm gonna cast a worm in there. Now I'm for sure gonna see a hop here. There it is. Well. Got him. There we go. What I tell you. What I tell you. Watch your line, and you'll notice when they... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I did, once again, not enough line. Thank you, friend. Wasn't even worth showing to you guys. He was that small. That small of a fish. All right. There's one fish out of a hole. All the fish probably know I'm here now. Nope, they did not. They did not, and he stole my trousers. Stole my whole trousers. Slip it in, watch my line. Come on now. There he is. You got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a nicer one. Hello. Yellow. Didn't even have to, uh, didn't even have to feel that one. Saw the line jump and thought, I'm gonna set the hook. And what you do in that scenario, <laughs> got him, let's go. On the ocho. Roof of the mouth. Beautiful, that's a lots of tournament fish right there. But what you do in that scenario when you see the line jump and then you swing and set the hook, 
this is kind of unconventional, and some of you guys might think it's dumb, but I think it's smart, is that if the fish has it, great, you caught the fish. If the fish has dropped it, that, that lure flies past them, and I think it flies past them so fast that they're just kind of like, what was that? And you have the next chance to go in and catch that fish again. There's also the, the school of thought that, you know, you feel for that fish, and then if it drops it, you, you leave, the, leave the worm down, then maybe you'll pick it up again. And that's also a school of thought, and neither one is wrong, I don't think. I just, I also think it's just kind of fun to, uh, to just swing on them. How are we doing down there? We're doing good. Oh man, we got back to the good area now. Back to the good, good. Good, good golf boys. All right, well, I think two fish and three bites out of one hole is all we're gonna get here. I'll stand up now and see what I've been casting in. It's just a, just a deep hole. I don't see any bluegill beds. Gosh, it's just beautiful around here. It is ba beautiful. Ooh, it was a nice. Oh, it's the same. That's the same bluegill. Gosh, same bluegill hole that I saw earlier. And one took my pants down. I think it's a. I think it's a bluegill, not a bass. But we're gonna make another cast up in there. Yeah, that's a bluegill. Yep. I could tell by the way he was biting. Not worth setting the hook on that guy. He already messed up my worm enough. Okay. That's just the way life plays. There's a hole right there. How about this guy? See my worm falling down in there? Give it a hop. No fish, no fish, no bones. All right. Let's paddle ourselves a little shallower. <clears throat> Find those bluegill beds again. I have no clue how many fish I've caught today. No clue how many bass I've caught. Oh, that's a good cast. Come on now. There's gotta be a bass around there, eh? No? No bass? Right there, you kidding me? I'm drifting backwards fast. I gotta peel your line, move your rod tip. Gets the line out there. Wow, oh, okay. I guess, I guess no bass there. Okay, we're back to the area that I got some frog bites at. So I'm gonna cast the frog again. There you go. Come on. No more frog eaters around here. Uh-oh, I see some, I see some tires in the water. Y'all know how much I like tires. I'm a tires guy. Big tires guy. Oh, hello. It's possible the frog bite is kind of waning. Well, as I get a bite. Oh my gosh, I got a blue gill going pop, 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 pop. Attacking my frog. Not eating it. Wouldn't assume he could. I'm gonna cast the frog over this opening here that I know I could probably throw the worm in, but sometimes when you throw the frog first, that like gets the biggest one in the area to come up and eat it. You might not have gotten if you throw the worm in there. The worm might catch just any old fish. That's what happened in my last uncut. First cast I made one of these holes with this, this exact frog, actually. I got smoked by an almost seven pounder. Wow, can't believe I didn't catch on the frog out there. Boom. Boo, 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 boo. 
Okay. <laughs> Enough with the frog for now. You know, you'll be able to tell also in these uncuts, and I think especially this one, how much I switch from one lure to the other. And if, if I was my bass boat, or even if we had a if we had good vegetation, not this weird stringy stuff, I'd be switching between a swim bait and then a swimming worm and a vibrating jig. But I, I really just think sticking with these two right now is best for this specific situation. But you really got to be versatile. The, the true junk fisherman out there, I think, is a good angler, and they're able to throw whatever all the time and know exactly where it should go. And so that's what you'll notice in these uncuts. I'm trying to junk fish around, you know, to the best of my ability. Oh gosh, there was a bass. There was a bass right there. Dang. He was in a little, little shallow pocket. Little pickpocket. There's another shallow pocket right up there. And I got a backlash. I did not flip it good. This line is so old. This, this, line, this line is the problem. Because I'm always going to blame it on everything else. Besides myself. I know I said no frog, but this area over there looks froggy. Ooh, interesting. When I'm, I literally just turned my body, and now that I'm shallow looking back out deep, I can see way better from this angle. I guess the sun is more shooting this way, so I'm actually going to focus on staying shallow now. I can see way better. Cool. Still going to go fish out deep, but stick to the shallower water, as I can see. We got some stumps around here, and yeah, we got some good looking water. We got some juicy looking water. Mmm. I wish I was here for the bass spawn. I'm sure that would have gone nutty. I hate stringy grass with a passion. Have I told you that? I told you all how much I hate this grass? Any grass is better than no grass, but it doesn't mean I'm not gonna complain about it. It's a real snotty type. Now it's easier to clean off your lures than snot grass, but it gets on them just as easily. And now, as soon as I get shallow, it gets windy. How is that? How does that work? Man. Ugh. Okay. Got some holes here. Although I'm really, I'm really liking this area that I see closer to the dam. There he is. Little squirt. Gosh, so hard fighting though. So hard fighting. No! My, ouch. Gosh, my worm again. I never lose ochos this fast, so I think it's the, the heat of them. You gotta keep them in a cooler, maybe. You'll notice I haven't retied one time. And that's, uh, that's probably not smart, but also a testament to my line. I've got a few nicks in it. I can feel it's not totally perfect, but that's Seaguar. I think this is actually Basics. It's about the cheapest fluorocarbon you can get, but it has all the benefits of fluorocarbon. It's just not a not as high quality, not as you know abrasion resistant, or not strength isn't as good as Invisex or Tatsu. But 
Still works for me. You can tell I'm catching plenty of bass on it. Nothing. My phone fell out. Get some more water as our worm falls. Almost out of water. It's not good. When I run out of water and I get thirsty, that's gonna be the end of this video. Let me tell you, it's hot. The wind helps, but it's still hot. Oh, I'm so excited to get north. This video here will drop when I'm probably at near the end of my New York swing. Maybe sometime in the middle. Yeah, probably near the end. And I'm excited. I'm gonna catch some giant smallmouth. If y'all follow me on Instagram, you've definitely been seeing some giant smallmouth. Probably some six pound largemouth. Maybe a seven pound largemouth. Who knows? That would be nice. Never caught a seven pound northern strain. So I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, man, this frog bite is basically done. I'm casting it over some good looking areas that I got bites at or like that I would, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess you just gotta find the right fish. You just gotta put it around the right bass. Oh gosh. Yeah, this guy here didn't seem to mind that it was past frog time. I just hadn't put it in front of the right fish. Look at him, go on. Thank you, friend. Two pounder. Once again, though, frog gets a bigger bite. Almost always does. Just kind of, gosh, holy cow. I'm gonna say, hey, I'll check my, check my lens. I just had a big one bust and totally miss it. Oh no, and I got, oh, I got a loop in my line. Shoot, 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 shoot. There we go. Oh, get off my fingers. This is a mess. This is an absolute mess. Fish missed it. He's probably still there. Let's turn the kayak around. Make a good cast. Back to that area. Perfect. One, two. Pop, 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 pop. Come on. Where you at? I just released a video about topwater follow-up lures. And this is the perfect scenario here where the fish missed it. I set the hook, didn't have the opportunity to leave the bait right there. So I had to make another follow-up cast with the same top water. There we go. One more cast. Hmm. Has not come back for it on the top water. All right, so I'm going to reel in my top water poke up on in there with my kayak and see if the worm can get the job done. All right. Fish don't want to hang. Fish don't want to hang, man. Oh gosh, just had a small one. There was a, a bluegill bed on the outside of this little grass edge. And a fish came out and bit it around that. I don't even know where that big fish was sitting on, to be honest. I don't even see an opening. It's just regular bottom. Regular bottom. Ain't no bikini bottom. Oh, but, huh? little guy. Don't want to catch him. He, he made a swipe at it. All right, let's restart here. All right. Beautiful. Now we're in the little, little calm area. We ain't got no wind. Mmm. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. And the Lord our God is forever on his throne. Come on. Somebody comment, amen. 
Somebody comment, amen. There's a bass. There's a bass right there. Just cruising. Just cruising around. Maybe he was going that way. And we'll intercept him. No, he wasn't. Maybe one's up there. This time of the year, you definitely catch more when it's sunny than cloudy just because you can see them better. If, you, if you're doing this style of fishing, that is. If you're doing the brim beds. Because you're still, you're still kind of sight fishing, per se. You're just not like actively looking at a singular fish, usually. What are you doing? Huh? Keep going. Keep this train rolling. We got a little more water left to hit. A little more shoreline left. Ah, forget this. Forget this. I'm going. I'm going to where the fish are, and that's on those those edges, those holes where the bluegill beds are. I'm just. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing that here. So once again. Using my understanding of this time of the year and the fact that I don't want this video to be 17 hours long, I'm going to go fish where I think the majority of the fish are, which is not right here. It's going to be back in this corner. If they were on a flat over there, they're going to be on this flat over here probably. But I'm just going to kind of go slow here. It is a better looking edge, better looking drop off. See if I see any bluegill beds. If I see any bass cruising, if that's the case, then it's probably a good area to dissect a little bit. Like right here. Got a stick right here. Lay down tree. If any place is good to just let the worm fall, it'd be that. I think I got on it too much. Should have made Casman farther away. Man! Goofed that one up. And once again, the sun comes out and I can see a nice little, a nice little edge here. Throw the frog on. Wouldn't have known that was there if it was cloudy. Get off of there. And then I also see a log up here in the water. Let my worm fall down the log. Let it slide into a fish's mouth. Da -da 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 -da. Nope, no such thing. Here we go. Kind of the reason why I like these uncuts, because y'all get to see how long it takes to really dissect a body of water. And, you know, when I have fish catches in my video, how long it takes to get those catches on camera. I can't just go out there for an hour and knock everything out and call it a day. Sometimes it's a long process. Ah, oh, dang it. Now it's just it's just shallow over here. Shoot! Shoot, we ain't got no good cover. I mean, we ain't got no good edges. We got lots of good cover. <clears throat> Kind of hurt my hurt my arm. I don't know how. I don't know what I did. It's 
probably my least favorite part of kayak fishing is when you're on a spot and the wind all of a sudden picks up and you can't help yourself. Can't help it, you just, you blow out of the spot. <sighs> I'd like to catch a big one. That's what I'd like. Beggars can't be choosers, but beggars can be deciders. And I'm going to decide to catch a big one. Right now. Right here. Maybe. Oh my gosh. It's grass. Gosh. That was one. That was one for sure. And then my fluorocarbon did exactly what my braid does. It tied a knot in itself. It tied a knot in itself. How to do that? Oh my gracious. How to do that? Re rig my worm. Slide the bobber stopper back. Cast back in there. This is frustrating. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like this. I liked it when I first got here and they were just chewing. And heck, maybe they're chewing the same now. I just, I'm used to it. I don't know. Could very much be it. Could be that I'm now spoiled. If I'm not catching them all the time, I feel like something's wrong. Definitely possible. <sighs> Well, let's go ahead and catch one more fish. We're gonna catch one more to finish out this video, all right? <sighs> one more fish. Hopefully, it's a big one. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Feels nicer. Oh my goodness, nice one. Heck yeah. That's a good fish to end today's fishing. Oh, get, oh my gosh, get out of there. Get out of there, yes sir. Hey, beautiful. Be oh my gosh. Man, this grass, like they, they go underneath it and you can't just like rip it. And so you have to peel them back through and that just gives them a lot of opportunities to, to shake their mouth and get, get it more loose. Shoot, man. Yes, so you just gotta winch these fish maybe. Maybe that's the key. Gosh, darn it. Ugh. Almost finished it right there. Two and a half pounder. My, my worm is swimming awful fast. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> You're getting in here. No chance. No chance to escape. Ha <laughs> ha That right there, folks, is the video ender. Roof, roof of the mouth. I mean, that, that's like ideal hook position. You love to see it. What an amazing fun day. Hey, hopefully y'all learned something about summertime bass fishing, really just worm, Texas rig, you know, standard standard stuff. Glad we got one big one. I didn't even have to go scoping necessarily, but hey, got a big one. If you wanna see a previous uncut that I just released, maybe some of y'all have seen it, but if you haven't, some awesome frog fish catches, I will leave that up here in this corner. And if you wanna see my last kayak uncut, I will leave that one here, definitely a different style of fishing. What a video. My name's Tyler. We'll see you guys next time right here on Uncut.